Hello friends, welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice Podcast. My name is L. I am here to read some um, transcripts from the Law of One, and then I'm going to comment on them with my personal perspective, what they mean to me, what kind of thoughts that it uh, sparks within me that I feel are maybe helpful to share. So, uh, first of all, you can find all of this information with links on my website, theoneinfinitecreator.com. You can download it all for free or just search it up online. Um, but yeah, let's begin. So this is from session 22.6, and this will be raw from the Law of One. And the topics generally around this one are going to be about, um, about death about catalyst that comes our way and whether we use it or not and and how to interpret all of that stuff because I'm sure a lot of us have dealt with death and and sickness and relatives whether it's yourself that may be sick or somebody else that you know so yeah let's get into it Um, this will be raw so let's begin the quote The shortening of the lifespan is a distortion of the law of one, which suggests that an entity not receive more experience in more intensity than it may bear. This is only in effect upon an individual level and does not hold sway over planetary or social complexes. Thus, the shortened lifespan is due to the necessity for removing an entity from the intensity of experience, which ensues when wisdom and love are, having been rejected, reflected back into the consciousness of the creator, without being accepted as part of the self. This then causing the entity to have the need for healing and for much evaluation of the incarnation. A much longer incarnation in your space-time continuum is very helpful for continuing this intensive work until conclusions have been reached through the catalytic process. Ra, the law of one, end of quote. And once again, that is from session 22.6. All right, so let's get into this. Um, This brings up to me, um, you know, it's talking about the shortening of the lifespan is a distortion of the law of one, which suggests an entity not receive more experience and more intensity than it may bear. Uh, This I find somewhat, well, I suppose it's somewhat frightening in a way, but honestly, it's sort of comforting in that you know that if anybody is suffering um, or has passed away, it's because it was what's best for them. Um, you know, the the creator in the creator, there are no mistakes. There are surprises. Um, that doesn't even necessarily mean that the life was a perfect harmony, a perfect balance of of what needed to be done. Um, but you can know that given the spiritual evolution of the soul of that person, um, if the lifespan is to be shortened, it is to be shortened. Um, so I generally see this as um, helpful in that I can um, see this perspective and it helps me to accept the death of others around me, you know, whether that be a family member or friends or, or, lo- or loved, other loved ones um, or even people I don't know. Um, they mention also here, this is only in effect upon an individual level and does not hold sway over planetary or social complexes. Um, so what are they saying there? I mean, it basically just saying that this sort of rule that one may not bear more than it can take only happens on your an individual level and not on like the level of earth or the level of a nation, um, you know, like a big a social complex, which would imply, in my opinion, like a bunch of people. So it's not that a whole bunch of people um, necessarily have to perish <laughs> because of, of, um, of, of their ways or, but, um, you know, if, if an individual does, then that, that may, that may happen. So let's continue on with the quote here. So they say, thus the shortened lifespan is due to the necessity for removing an entity from the intensity of experience, which ensues when wisdom and love are having been rejected, reflected back into the consciousness of the creator without being sec- accepted as part of the self. This then causing the entity to have the need for healing and much evaluation of the incarnation. That This quote always stuck with me because that one specific part where they talk about which ensues when wisdom and love are having been rejected, reflected back into the consciousness of the creator without being accepted as part of the self. 
Well, my understanding is that um, we, likely if you're listening to this, you're polarizing in the service to others aspect. Uh, we live in third density, and that means that you will choose to either serve others or serve the self exclusively. And I'm assuming that you're listening to this because you are of the service to others polarity. Um, this may also be described as, well, let's actually describe what the polarity of the service to self is. They describe that elsewhere, not in the raw material, but in the co-material as the path that is not. It's allowed, the free will aspect allows somebody to go down the negative path for a certain period of time, but eventually it's reconciled. But why am I bringing this up? Well, let's just bring it back to then I would consider that the service to others path is the path that is, which is in more harmony and in more resonance with the true nature of the creator. And so being that our incarnations from the first density to the last, to the seventh, eighth, if you will, um, that is almost, well, other than free will, it's a, it's a path of acceptance. It's a path of getting out of the way, getting the personality out of the way in order to accept the fullness of the creator, which is complete truth, unity, beauty, love, everything. And it, so if you are rejecting love and wisdom, in, and that's being reflected back into the consciousness of the creator, it's as if you're reflecting back something that is not into the, the consciousness of the creator, which is what is. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little convoluted, but to me that, that makes perfect sense. So if, if you're um, in an incarnation and your thoughts are not in alignment with you know, what's best for your path, because also when you come here, you have an incarnational plan. Your, your soul and your higher self um, definitely plans your incarnation to a certain degree that there are lessons that you have come down here to learn. Um, and so a lot of those lessons have to do with love and wisdom and acceptance, um, whether that be loving the self or loving others or being loved. Um, all of those types of things, if, you are not, if you're rejecting them, you're essentially rejecting the love and the wisdom of the Creator. Um, and in that, other than you taking the path of the service to self, which I assume you don't want to do, well then you're just stagnating. You're not moving forward. You're not really doing anything. All you're doing is just uh, perpetuating a negative feedback loop likely. And in which case then, you know, the life or third density illusion will provide you with an out. It will provide you with a way out of here so that you may go back into your indigo body, which is like your spirit body. And you'll have that widened perspective of the creator, in which case you can review your incarnation from that higher perspective and see that, oh no, uh, you know, dang it, I kind of messed up there. You know, I came and incarnated in order to learn wisdom and love and there I spent my whole time just being bitter and mean and and, and not accepting anything and, and no wonder I had to, you know, leave that place and, and, and come here momentarily or for a while to, to heal, which is what they are speaking about here at the end end of the second paragraph when they say this then causing the entity to have the need for healing and for much evaluation of the incarnation so when you die you're um, in your yellow ray body your third density body uh, my understanding is that you die the indigo ray body comes into play you have seven bodies the indigo being the top one the higher self if you will uh, that being also the closest to the creator thus holding the most truth and most perspective for your learning and planning of a future incarnation um, so you transfer your consciousness over to the indigo body and at that point um, you undergo um, evaluation of the incarnation so because once you're in the spirit body you're not in space time you're in time space therefore time is fluid and you can just go back and forth and, and look at everything and and um and my understanding is a, an incarnation an incarnation review is like um you get to see every choice that you made every action that you did and because you are one with everyone and everything at that same time you get to experience every single choice and how that 
how that um, affected everybody else and everything else. So not only, you know, just in the our 3D perspective, we only get to see it from our perspective, from an incarnational review. You'll get to experience the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of not only yourself, but every single person that you touched in this incarnation. Um, so to me, if you spent a lot of time doing things that have, are of the rejecting nature, then you're going to probably be spending a lot of time in review, um, in evaluating your incarnation and reviewing it. However, this is all under the pretense that the creator is perfect still even though it may not sound like it because you come here free will and you can make choices which seem imperfect um the still the underlying truth is that the creator is perfect there is perfection in the moment and there's perfection in every moment and even though if you feel your incarnation has gone astray uh worry not you are still here <laughs> you are alive um this is somewhat of a comfort to me and that the way I know understand our 3D lives here to work is that if I'm alive and I'm here and I'm breathing then I have work to do I have lessons to learn I have um, things to accept of myself and of others and le lessons of, of love and wisdom and unity to to um, to bring into my being so at the same time, I can accept that when there's other people who are going to leave this incarnation right now, um, I don't assume that they're leaving because they can't handle their catalyst. There's also the fact that we're at the end of third density and going into fourth, and and um, people may graduate at this time too. You know, if they did uh, well in terms of acceptance of love and wisdom, um, giving love and accepting love then generally that's sort of the, the passport out of here, you know, the choice to, to serve others to a certain purity, a certain degree of purity. And so we are here, we are alive, you're listening to me, and therefore uh, we have work to do, and that is good. That is good and well. I'm happy to be here doing the work, even though some days it may seem dark, um, other times, you know, like right now, I get to talk and connect with a bunch of weird people like you, and, and that gives me purpose and comfort and strength. And so you can find, you can find um, this perspective if you want. It's not something that you can hold, you know, permanently, but it's, it's um, in my opinion, the truth. And so it's, it's good to to be willing to accept the wider perspectives of life. Okay, so now lastly, says a much longer incarnate, uh, much longer incarnation in your space time continuum is very helpful for continuing this intensive work until conclusions have been reached through the catalytic process. I believe what they're trying to say there is that um, what's better is that instead of you just not accepting your life and and dying. Um, it's better to have a prolonged incarnation in which you deal with your possible sicknesses and, and things that are trying to get your attention to, to work on yourself and accept yourself and accept others, um, that you don't ignore those things and, and you work with them until you've reached some sort of conclusion about, th about that, which would basically be another way of saying you're using your catalyst. You're not just letting the catalyst come your way and ignoring it. You are putting it to use. I will just quickly give a thing on free will. I mean, even then you can go, you have to understand free will is, is really important. So Carla, who channeled a lot of the material that I read here, um, she explained that I think when she was younger, like seven or eight, you know, she didn't want to live. I mean, you can ask her why, but um, she didn't want to live. And so at that point, she was offered the opportunity to leave this incarnation and she developed some type of uh, disease. I'm not sure if it was kidney disease or something like that, um, in which case she passed, o passed over momentarily and, and then was offered the opportunity to come back here in that body. Um, but just know that, you know, it's basically it's a, it's a free will thing here whether it's conscious or unconscious, it's still free will. I mean, you, you have the free will to seek in certain ways. And um, if you want out of here, I mean, the you will be provided with the opportunity. So I don't know, I just suppose I just, it's like a warning, but it's also just knowledge for your sake of knowing that, um, you know, careful for what you ask. And it's good to be grateful for life and, and the things that we have. And 
Yeah, I'm very grateful. And then lastly, I want to just mention again, I mean, I already talked about it, but Ra mentioned elsewhere in the material, I, I just can't think of it or bring it up right now, but they did mention about disease. You know, we, we probably have this idea in our head that disease, you know, with especially with what's going on the past couple of years, um, is a very negative thing. And obviously it, it is, it's not nice to see people die. Um, but the way they explain disease is that it's an opportunity, it, it's a second density entity, a disease, it's a virus or a bacteria or whatever it is. Um, it is offering you its service. When you are using your free will to, to not want to be here, well then at that point the disease offers its service to you and allows you an opportunity to leave this incarnation. Um, so I don't know, I just mentioned that because it's just another wider perspective. Um, I, I do feel that it's, it's strange when death happens around me because I know these things it seems to hurt a little less hard knowing that, you know, everything is perfect is as it is. And I try not to be like, um, too cold about it. Obviously, like I want to cry and stuff when somebody's gone, it's sad. But at the same time, you know, death is a transformation. It is not the end of everything, although um, it may very well seem like it. Like you just close your eyes and it goes black. I mean, my understanding, this is not the case. So all is well. Death is a transformation. Um, if you've sort of dealt with it before, maybe it's a little easier. I, I think I, I did. I, I dealt with a a thing where I almost sort of died. I mean, it wasn't as, it wasn't like tragic or anything, but 10 years ago I had this reaction to some medicine I was taking and then it caused um, my, my immune system to attack my platelets and I almost died from just like bleeding to death essentially. So I've somewhat dealt with it, but I do know that I'm still definitely afraid of death to a certain degree. I mean, maybe less than I was before. Maybe that was an initiation into this whole spiritual stuff and this seeking. Um, I, I don't know, but I just do know that, um, that we, most of us are scared of death and that's okay because we don't know for sure. I mean, you know, maybe I'm just talking out I'm mean, just making things up here, but like, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is not the case. Um, many, many of my teachers that I, um, speak or not, I speak with many teachers that I read, um, you know, from over the ages, like Manly P. Hall, if you're ever wanting to know more about death and spirit world too, like there's more than just these perspective, this raw perspectives out here. There's lots of people that talk about this, this type of thing. So yeah, I suppose with all the <laughs> death and destruction around, it's just nice to have a wider perspective on it. Know that all is well, the creator has got this, you know, thy will be done let's go, let's, let's do what we, what we came here to do, let's live our lives to the best of our ability, all is well, you're alive, you have work to do. And with that, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. If you would like to support me, theoneinfinitecreator.com, I got a couple links there, and I would uh, really appreciate the support. You could like, share, subscribe the, vid um, the video and my channel, and other than that, I will be attempting to do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So tune in, and I love you guys. Have a great weekend.